line. Loveline is meant for an adult audience. Loveline may contain sexually oriented content. Sexually oriented content. This is Loveline. 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 With Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Dr. Drew is a board certified physician and addiction medicine specialist back from Vermont and New York. Yes. Ice skating tour. Yeah. How'd that go? It was good. They did good. It was a very heated competition. Hmm. And had a nice time in New York. How'd your daughter do? It, it was a, it was a, th- a theater on ice team. Mm. So it's a big team of young girls. Mm. And, you know, good times. Any guys doing that? A couple guys. Gay on no, gay. No, 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 no. Smart. Fact, yes. Shrewd. Yes. 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 Mm-hmm. No. See I know. About? No, I look. I, I know. You know, here's, here's you the thing. You go one way or the other. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. Here's. Here's a little little tip to you young lads out there. I, I know it's been said before, but if you choose a profession or if you choose classes when you're still in school that are exclusively guys, you know, you play on the football team, guess what? You got dudes. You got dudes aplenty, and you got naked dudes, and you got sweaty dudes, and that's what you got. Yep. Uh, on the other hand, you, you like ladies. If you like the ladies, uh, go go pick up the oboe and go sit in the w- Winwood section, or go go on the dance team, dance. or go start taking ballet or something, or whatever. Cut, cut hair, Ooh, right? Yeah. Like ice skating, ice skating's yeah. good. And then later, Theater. yeah, later on in life, because I'm just you, you need to learn from my mistakes. Because don't get a, don't go into construction. No, go have an office place where there are women. Have a look. I'm telling you. That as a, you know, look, when you're, when you're a 19, 20 year old guy and you're out of high school and you're just entering the workforce at, you know, some sort of bottom level, whatever, you pick up a hammer or a shovel, you will be damned yeah. to just work with sweaty Guatemalan guys and, you know, Vietnam vets strung out on painkillers. And then because you're only making nine or 10 bucks an hour, you ain't getting laid. You're coming home. You're driving a crappy truck. You have a roommate, you know, 10 roommates in a small apartment. You got nothing. So really, that should be the gay lifestyle. Yes. Let's face it. Yes. If you want to be gay, be go into construction. Yeah, but the other guys aren't gay. But eventually, but, but if enough eventually, guys got yeah. into it, yeah. Well, yeah. they did. One of the village people was was the construction. Seemed guy. to do that. He could have worked for the phone company. But here's my point. My point is, is or you're the exact same guy and you get a gig like bartending. Or, or even just bar backing. Right. Just something where you're working at McGinty's over by the beach. And uh, you're, not even, you're not even pouring the drinks. You ain't Tom Cruise from Cocktail. You're just a bar back. Even just, just you're in the environment. Yep. There are chicks working there. There are chicks coming there. There are people having good times, celebrating. The exact same guy. I would love to do an experiment. But the exact same sort of 20-year-old guy who was uh, decent looking but not a full-fledged hunk, getting the same pay, will get one million times more ass at that place than he will on a construction site. Oh, or infinity more. Oh, infinity <laughs> more because one number is zero. <laughs> That's right. Actually, I actually owe ass for my... Asymptotic. Woo. The boom. <laughs> just the, the zero. Cliffs of Dover. <laughs> it's it's uh it's half dome of Yosemite. <laughs> Pow! Straight up. That's how the graph goes. The graph actually starts bending <laughs> over towards that side. It's the crest of a wave. You've never seen a graph go up and start <clears throat> bending the other way. Oh <laughs> bad times. Oh, but I know, but in high school, whatever, yes. Be the one straight guy that's involved with skating. There'll be tons of chicks with eating disorders and low self esteem throwing themselves at Let's you. Let's get off you that subject onto the the shirt you're wearing. <sighs> onto the shirt you're wearing. Yeah. And well, I got Drew brought Drew brought me a gift back yes, from his travels. Yes. It's a uh, blue, it's a smart blue, sort of cobalty blue t shirt that just says junior college on it. It looks like it should say, like, you know, Amherst College on it. Right. But it but says it's, junior college. And it is awesome. Yeah. It's, and it, I, it screamed at him. I saw it at a store. I said, oh, well, have, yeah, have to take this home. I appreciate it. And I'll, uh, I'll wear it proudly while getting my ass kicked by junior college football team. <laughs> but, uh, and I, you should know that. Uh, Tom Kinney was in here, SpongeBob, to you, mm. and uh, he shares my passion for my hatred of junior college. Oh, no oh yes. Did he do it as SpongeBob or as? No, the... he did it during, you know, while we we're in the bathroom. Oh, he 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 
Yeah, I, I was like, ah, enough already with junior college. Yeah. He, he was tiring my ear out. Where's up the cloven hoof, Prince of Darkness? <laughs> yeah. There he is. There he is. All right. What else, Drew? Um, the, t- I did some commentary on Tom Cruise. What did you think of his whole ordeal? When he went crazy on the Today Show and started screaming at Matt Lauer. About, uh, about Scientology, psychiatry and the psychiatry, and medication, and drugs, and you know, I know the history, and you need to yeah. study this, and yeah. if you knew it like I knew it, uh, you'd have the same belief system. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, here's, here's what happens, Drew. Uh, you don't know because you're not a celebrity, but I know. I know the trappings of celebrity. Well, they, they, they end up in a bubble, and they start thinking they understand and know everything. Yeah, and they don't. And anyone around them that tells them they're wrong or they should reel it in, when it gets fired. Yeah, you know what I was yapping about last night. Think about the uh, Prince, the uh, artist yes. formerly known as Prince. Yes, and I was saying if I tried to pull that crap with any of my buddies, oh. and I, I intentionally hang out with most of my old buddies and Jimmy, who basically, uh, you know, they just critique the hell out of you. Here's what. Here's why you need buddies. You need buddies because if you guys are going out on a Saturday night and you come walking out of the house wearing a leather vest and some bad boots, they need to yell at you to go back in the house and put some high tops on. We're not going out. We're not going out with one of the village people. Yes, you know sir, they, they, they or, need or they will you just need, they will just uh, or beat the crap the out of you. Clothes hanger. It's yes. Pow, clothes line. Yes. Clothes line, yeah. Yeah. Clothes hangers for the abortion. Right. 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 Uh, right. The point is, or to get into the car. Yeah. The yeah, point okay. is, is they need your buddies. You need people in your life. Who, who are For honest. Drew, it's his wife, and then it's his wife, and his wife, and his wife, who says, look, where are you going? Who picked that shirt out? Go back up and put something else on. You look horrible. Yeah. What's going on? No, no, those glasses, the frames on yeah. those yeah, yeah. make you look I mean, like a thousand times gayer than you already are. Go get some new ones. You know what I mean? That's what you need. Now, obviously, the princes and the Tom Cruises of the world have extracted these people right. from their lives. That's right. Because... Could you imagine saying to me, oh. uh, yeah, Adam, listen, <clears throat> I'm no longer going to go as Dr. Drew. I'm going to go as this. Yes, and you, just drew, you just drew the uh, snake that was uh, going up the side <laughs> of that uh, crotch. The caduceus. Caduceus' <laughs> uh, serpent was going up. Yeah, yeah this is my new symbol. I'm, I'm no longer Dr. Drew. I'm a symbol. Uh, and, and, and I'm the... The uh, broadcaster formerly known as Dr. Drew. Right, and yeah. here's the thing. Yeah. I'd be like, well, how do I say your symbol, you know, when we're starting the show? And you'd say, well, welcome to Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla, and that's the broadcaster formerly known as Dr. Drew. I'd be like, are you high? Are you an idiot? you got to be crazy. I'm going to beat the crap out you of you actually, right now. No, you would not. I would you start would not, smashing yes, you with right Caduceus yes. Cane <laughs> right. right in the head. Hermes the po- up the ass. The, the point is, is... Obviously, the princes of the world don't have that person right. because right. they would go, well, I'm just thinking of going as a symbol, and, and all their friends would just give them a good prison beating. Well, that's so, the other thing. And they, a lot of, remember how we sort of get, particularly the male movie stars, you and I kind of have yes. found, generally, they are so F-O-S. Les, let me, yes. let me, let me explain the sort of um, jackass l- pecking two order two week, that we've, we've sort of... Word. Bigger, pompous, arrogant, semi-dangerous yeah. jackasses okay. right. uh, in in order of appearance. Yeah. Um, th- the the worst is probably the male movie star. Movie star. Uh, why? I mean, we I know no that idea. from being the show. Yeah. Whether you know Keanu Reeves uh, and the list goes on and on. Uh, G- guys that are basically driftwood smart that think uh, they have brains because they've eliminated all the people in their lives that call them idiots, and they only have yes people that are on the payroll. And, and they have also the whole world going, "You're a genius! You're a genius! You're a genius!" You know right. something the rest of us don't. Yes, know. Sir, Mr. Why should you be a genius when you start making movies at 19 and 20 How years later? How could you be? You're just making another movie. Yes. Right. All right. Okay. So, so, um, so, male actors, worse. Female actors are usually yeah, no, just no, vacuous. But not, but not, but oh, not, television. not actors. Sorry. No. Movie. Yeah. Features. Feature, yeah. Yeah. Now, now, comedians are usually just nutty. Right. And it can be nice, but the, the female ones are just Ooh. off the charts, yeah, yeah, wacko. Yeah. yeah. Okay. See, the, the male comedians are usually smart and will listen. Yes, right. sir, they may come back with some weird stuff. F'd at least up, they're listening. And, right. Yeah. You know, now, ironically, probably the nicest of the group is the male sitcom Television, actor. yeah. I would yeah. say so. Yeah? Yeah. Or even dramatic. Like, remember the guys from the OC before they got... He was very... I don't know how they are now. We don't get to talk to them anymore. Right. But they were very 
very nice, often humble. Yeah, yeah. There's, uh, guys coming in from sitcoms always seem to got, be uh, super friendly you guys. Got the Isai, you know, the Isai Morales. Isai Morales. Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> Him and uh, who would have Keanu Reeves ought to get together and just have a nice think tank. Go ahead and solve AIDS for us. That'd be awesome. And or maybe be, a band would be nice. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Strange enough, radio guys come out looking pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Well, radio guys aren't real, really celebrities. But but I understand. But still, on the whole scale of things. Yeah, radio guys are usually just fat with bad haircuts, but they know they're not celebrities. Right, that's true. But but uh, male uh, male male feature actors are uh, are always the worst. But anyway, what were we talking but about? The truly smart oh. guys, like the like the broadcaster, the news people, and stuff. Yeah. Also, very nice, very humble, very li listening very carefully. Usually. We want their mind to be changed. Yes. Yeah. All right. So, what happens when you're Tom Cruise? I don't know. I guess uh, you don't have enough people from the old neighborhood calling you an idiot, and you just start spinning out a little bit. That's fine. Little yes, sir, Miss Scroll. But you know what? There's something about the guy that doesn't bother me. I don't know yes, why. Yes, he's not unlikable. Yes, in he, fact, he's in sort fact, of positive about things. And in fact, I was watching this station interview thinking, well, this isn't so bad. I mean, so the guy's got an opinion. Why are we beating him up about it? And then he just went, choo -poo. Yeah. He just started attacking and really... Psychology. He, he just went into sort Therapy. Of a realm that was sort of... He understood things and he uh, was well-trained. And I thought, wait yeah. a minute, that's, not, that's just not true. That's, yeah. You just don't know. Well, it, it's really... It, it's if, if people keep... If you're in a business where people keep asking your opinion and keep hanging on every yeah. word, you get more and more pompous. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just, I don't know. It's like you become some sort of dictator that started yeah. off right. as a decent person right, and right, 20 right. years into it, you're just playing golf Very with peasants' heads, yes. you know? Interesting, yes. Every guy, I mean, I, I suppose it's Saddam sort of an absolute power Hussein thing. or maybe Fidel Castro, or maybe all these guys had semi-decent intentions at some point. Yeah. You know, at some point... Well, um, you know, Stalin's just going to get Mother Russia back up on its feet and running and proud. You know, yeah. this people will be, will be number one again. Well, Hitler had good intentions. People believed in what he believed in. Yeah, every everybody was uh, just super patriotic at yeah. the beginning, and then eventually that goes to paranoia, and right. then eventually you're having your brother executed. Yes, right. All Interesting. Right. Yeah, right. yeah. Right. So right. we, we've made the connection between the uh, Cruise and despotic, despotic di dictators, in fact, heinous dictators from history, and uh, male movie actors. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Got it. Got that it. that being said, <laughs> I am dying to see War of the World. <laughs> dying. Dying right. to see it. That's my kind of movie. Yeah, I bet. Spielberg and Cruise and stuff blowing up and yeah. aliens and on the run and special effects. That's a movie. Smart dialogue. Screw that. I want to see stuff. Matt? What's up? I am seeing War of the Worlds. Well, I'll see it this Fair weekend. Enough. Don't Fair stop enough. me. Okay, well. Matt? Yeah. What's up? 23. Yeah, hey, guys. Yeah. Hey. Um, hey, look, I've been with this girl for about three years now, and, mm -hmm. and the sex is great. As a matter mm -hmm. of fact, she actually orgasms before I do, which is a godsend. Mm hmm. But, uh,. When it comes to oral sex, she's not responsive at all. Right. The, 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 yeah, in fact, yeah. strangely enough, uh, uh, I'm doing a show for Discovery Health Channel tonight at midnight where we mm. discuss orgasm in huge detail. Oh, that's why you're back in the studio. That's why I'm back. Yeah, you want to give a show that. plug. Absolutely. Right. Why else? Get the plug. And, and, but the point is, though, the, I, I get into this in great detail about how there's sort of like a, I think we've got like a semicircle clock here going at them. Mm. Here, here's our clock. Mm -hmm. And on 60% on of women which is this part I'm coloring in here. I'm putting mm -hmm. a pie chart together, then mm -hmm. I'm coloring in 60%. They call that a semicircle clock? Well, I'm just thinking about oh, it. Oh, okay. And uh, what I'm coloring in here is women that have orgasm only with oral sex. Mm -hmm. 60%. 60%. Then there's a group here. And this is women 18 to 34 or all women? This is once they begin having orgasms, which okay. is older than 22 generally. Okay. Uh, and there's a group in here that has it, eh, you know, usually with intercourse, but sometimes with... Uh, with oral sex. With this them. chart is all women who orgasm, and we're breaking. They all right. They, you pretty can't, much, pretty you can't much make all it on this half clock if you don't orgasm. Pretty much all women orgasm. No, okay. that, that, I mean, pretty oh. much. <laughs> well, uh, <okay. laughs> my penis would beg to differ. I understand. And then there's a group out here that has orgasm multiple times, only in, as you know, with or, only with intercourse and multiple times. Where, Where are they? Here? Where are they? They're out, out in here. This That's like fine. Percent or so. How can I? And I how bet, Matt, if them? you kept going, your girlfriend would have more than one. I bet mm -hmm. you would have a series. Mm -hmm. And when you, when you're out in this district here, yeah, you don't like oral sex. 
Yeah, when you're at the far end of the spectrum yeah. and you're the 10 percentile. Yeah, and even, even the ones that have it most of the time with intercourse tend not to like oral sex. Well, Drew basing his hypotheses much on his own sexuality, which is uh, not a huge fan of the oral because... Uh, <laughs> No, I'm basically he's, talking to lots and lots of women, too. He's a, he's not a salad guy. He's a Salisbury steak man. He wants to dig in. He wants to put put on the old feedback. He don't want no sushi. He wants vittles. 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 That's what he wants. He wants vittles between the sheets. Matt, uh, cry me a river. <laughs> he's fine. He's fine, yeah. Not into oral sex? Fine. Yeah, and the, he's just curious. Uh, he's heard, I'm sure, that most women have... In fact, I, a woman asked me, so they should go, all my friends talk about oral sex. It's the only thing for them. I don't really like that. Mm -hmm. But I have orgasm with intercourse every time. It's the only, And she she couched it in, that's the only way I can do it. Mm -hmm. It's like, but... Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that, that's, how, that's how screwed up we've made... Uh, all the women's magazines have made women, which is they're perfectly normal functioning. In fact, they're above normal, and they feel like there's something wrong with them. Right. I'll tell you the difference between men and women. If a man is telling this to a woman, she's freaked out and disgusted, like yeah. someone approaching <laughs> you. For men, uh, if she's disgusting, we're disgusted, and if she's hot, we got a boner. You know what I mean? That's how we'll decide whether it's disgusting or not. Oh, no. Yes? Horrible. That's coming out of one of your mom's friends. It's like, hold on while I vomit into this waste paper basket. Hey, what were you saying? <laughs> oh, what was that? Multi orgasm. Oh. <laughs> Hang on. Oh, not, not lubricating as you know, you, like you did in your thirties. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's how that works. But if she's hot, it's like, huh? Oh, tell, oh yeah, do, do tell. I like uh, when the chick's hot. You start asking those uh, questions like it's not hot, but you're trying to just kind of get a little further. <laughs> Remember that one? Like, oh, yeah, yeah, was, yeah. But you know, sixty nine and can be pretty cool too. Oh, oh you don't like that? Oh, oh yeah, me neither. No, not me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you keep keep going. But here's the uh, yeah, where were we? But Drew, okay, so women that are multi orgasmic, can we? I I don't want to oversimplify it, but maybe there's two things working. One is they just want to get to no no what, they they either can't orgasm that way or it actually feels uncomfortable. No no, I'm not saying I'm saying two things. Just hear me out. One I. I, I know they can't orgasm that way, and, and that's why they just want to kind of get to it. Number This isn't the way they orgasm, so let's get to it. And then number two, they're, what if their machinery is so ultra-sensitive right. that, that it's almost uncomfortable? Right. And it's sort of like you know rubbing your finger on the top yes. palate of your mouth. It's, like it kind of tickles, yes. it's weird, it's, it's more uncomfortable. In that, more in that vein, because but, they're the, cause there's not that version of the guy. No, the, guy, but, the guy may not be able to have an orgasm, may not be interested in it, but it still feels good to a guy. But could we surmise that their sensitive, their sensitivity is what gives them the vaginal orgasm? I think so. And maybe the women who aren't having the vaginal orgasm are just less sensitive down I, there. I think something like that is accurate. Wow. Something along those lines. And that's now been shown fairly, uh, some very good studies have shown that this entire mechanism is genetically dependent. So yes. this idea that you could make somebody multi-orgasmic, BS. There's yeah. now good evidence that it's all genes, and that's that. Just like how, how your butt looks and how you proportion and all kind of stuff. Yeah. So we have to have videos of how to, how to become multi-orgasmic, really? Right, no. right. No. And, yeah, get, grab the workout video, yeah. too. Stephanie? Yes? Stephanie? Yeah? 26? Yes. Here you What's go. What's happening? <laughs> well, um... My question is, my husband was diagnosed paranoid schizophrenic about a year ago, mm -hmm. and I'm wanting to know um, what the reality of him getting on meds and staying on meds is, because so far he's been, um, he's found every reason in the book to get off meds. Which is something, a, f a strange sort of phenomenon in schizophrenics and in bipolar patients too oftentimes, is uh, they don't like to take the medicine for some reason. And schizophrenia can be really, really quite well treated. It, it's, it's, you know, it's a biological disorder of the brain. It often has a sort of a, not really a genetic basis to it, but uh, there appears to be some familial trends with it. We don't exactly know what triggers it, but it's something that causes a disruption in normal functioning of the brain where people hear things, they have delusional preoccupations, they get paranoid, and there are medicines specifically designed to correct that and do quite well in doing if so. If he doesn't 
take his meds, you're going to have a hard time hanging out with him, oh, I would yeah. imagine. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I already, I left about a month ago because he tried to kill himself in front of me mm. with a gun. So, nice. How did that work out? Well, he got into, he just, he had stopped taking meds and he got a, a really crazy idea in his head and hmm. there's nothing I could do to convince hmm. him otherwise. Well, he's got to read Dianetics. <laughs> you don't understand the answers from within. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're like a volcano exploding. And giving the medicine will just cover that. Yeah, just that'll, that. that'll yeah. mask it. Uh, yeah, no, look, if you have a serious, uh, gash in the side of your car, you wouldn't just put toothpaste on it and try to cover it up. <laughs> you'd actually, you'd have it fixed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's the same thing. I like when people do that kind yeah. of stuff. Oh, okay. Exactly. Same. Uh, exactly. Oh, I see. Yeah, I see. <laughs> I see. So it's my soul and not my brain. Okay. Right. I see. Anyway. So he's got to get on his medication. Uh, he's going to have to understand uh, as bad off as he is or almost like an alcoholic like look unless you do there, this there will be consequences the relationship is going to end and there's some long acting medicine sometimes that can be used uh, <laughs> and, and uh, even so I'll tell you what Stephanie it is a disease marked by relapses it's something that needs to be monitored monitored and followed very carefully by a doctor and uh, boy if he doesn't do that uh, he's going to end up sort of talking to himself wearing can Kleenex he, boxes he, in the street can he work um, no he's um He's actually, I mean, he's the type where he really thinks that he's um, hearing God's voice and um, he's hallucinating. So work's just not really an option for him. E even point. when he's on medication? Um, when he's on medication, the hallucin hallucinations definitely go away, but he still thinks he's hearing from God. That you, is still going yeah. on. Do you, do you have, um, do, um, do you... Uh, do you have kids is what I'm asking, yes. Well, we don't have a child together. I have a child from a previous marriage, but mm. no. we don't have any kids together. Got to be delightful for the uh, kid, yeah. by the way. Mm. How old's the kid? She's seven. Uh-huh. Is that seven? Wow. Yeah. And uh, you, by the way, you got a seven year old and a divorce on your belt. You just uh, 26. Just 26, yeah, and you're 26. working on your second divorce. What's up, yeah. baby? Yeah. I don't yeah, that's why I want to make this marriage work, because I don't want to be divorced twice with a kid and be 26. Jeez. All right, so here's the deal. Don't get the guy pregnant, and then, I mean, don't get you pre <laughs> Don't let the guy get you pregnant, or get the guy pregnant, yeah, and because they have those very realistic strap-ons now, Drew. Just just really quickly, does it was does he have a drug history? Your, uh, um, your yeah, he actually was a severe alcoholic and drug addict. From age 12 to about age 20. Because I wonder, is, is he doing any stimulants lately? Any speed? Well, the thing was, we had originally started seeing somebody that gave him Adderall for yeah. OCD. Right. And um, he got really addicted to that. Yeah, see, I, I, sometimes schizophrenia gets... I, I've seen many drug addicts mix, misdiagnose as schizophrenics when they're using a lot of hallucinogens. Or stimulants, they can look exactly like a schizophrenic. Mm -hmm. So the one hopeful note here is that perhaps he's not schizophrenic and just a bad drug addict, mm -hmm. and maybe getting to some sobriety. And if he's not in sobriety, even if he's schizophrenic, he really needs to get into a program of recovery. My brother-in-law's schizophrenic, and uh, he's fine except for the way he wears his hats. We talked about that. What does he do? Well, first off, sch schizophrenics and all crazy people wear weird hats. Mm -hmm. And their hats always look like somebody took them, pulled it off their head, mashed it, just started wringing it out, then fluffed it once Put and it back. smashed it back onto their head. Right. They don't wear the hat. The hat sits on their head. It's perched. It's perched. Yeah. It's like a hat landed on your head and took a crap. And it always drives me nuts because I'm like, look, give me that thing, fluff that thing out a couple times and pull it on like you're on a baseball team. But it's just like sort of, it's a, the front's a little askew, and it's never filled with their head. It's, right. There's more air in it, and it's sort of mashed. It's accordioned on their head, and the, you know, the back thing is like unsnapped sometimes or something. And it's like, look, I wouldn't know you were nuts if you snapped the thing on your hat and put your hat on right. Like, like there's a weird part, and I know that's what makes you nuts, and this is why I feel like I'm a... Um, a traveler from the from the, mm -hmm. from future time back <laughs> back sent back in time to be driven insane and eventually kill myself. <laughs> I you know eventually I thought I was here to do work. Yeah, now I, I realize I'm here to kill myself. Right, right. 
Yeah. Yeah. But this is your purgatory. Look, I want to scream like, look, you know, look, snap the hasp in the back of the hat, fluff it out once and pull it on, and no one will know you're nuts. I mean, if you start talking, they'll know you're nuts, but not not the guy next to you on the bus is unless you open your mouth. Now I can see your nuts from three hundred yards. Because the hat's mashed on and weird. You know, you see old guys that way, too. Oh, old, crazy old guy. Look at that hat. Oh, yeah. As opposed to the guy who's wearing a decent ball cap or golfing cap or something that looks like it's pulled on. Yep, you're right. Guys who wear hats the right way actually look saner yes. than your average person. Right. Right. Yes, sir, Mr. Grohl. You know you can pull that off. Pull it off? Yeah. You know what I like to do? I like to have like a like like a seminar where I just work with crazy people on how to wear hats. <laughs> <laughs> I, you could look one hundred percent saner just by putting the right hat on at the right time. And then I would get like I would get my celebrity friends together and we'd get money to get hats. I'd get like organizations like the Dodgers and the Angels. We wouldn't need the Kings. We don't want any of those hockey helmets. Yeah. But we, you know, just get people to donate hats. Come on, you're a celebrity. You got your own. You play that golf tournament. You're never going to wear that hat. Do donate it to crazy people who don't know how to wear hats. We'll work out some sort of clever acronym. And and we'll and all this and we'll fluff it and I'll have seminars and, and tutors and everything. We'll put the hats on and no one will know they're nuts. And here's the other thing you can't do when you're crazy. You can't have that huge tuft of hair sticking out the front of the hat or sticking out of the hole in the back. That's the other thing too. It's like when you put a hat on, you gotta pull your hair back or get it out of your face. You, you know what I mean? It's the other thing, it's like I you you pull your pants up and snap those. You, you know what I mean? HWH, how to wear hats. How to wear hats. And then we all get together and we cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> all the proceeds, after I get my 50% for expenses, go into hats, go into hat education. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hat, hat awareness. Yes? Yes. Yes. All right, let's take a break, Drew. All right. Do you know what I mean? Big old fat tuft of bang. Oh, you know, yeah. just big clump of hair sticking out in the front, back all mashed, a little bit askew. You know what? What is that? Just, if, you just, if you just do that thing where you sort of pull your bangs back and just sort of pull it on once, sanest guy on the block. Now, crazy man. Someone should be chasing you with a butterfly net. <laughs> all because of the hat. All right. Or just don't wear a hat. Right. All right. All right. But you know what? If they could put the hat on right, they wouldn't be crazy. If they had the HWH Society, they'd be fine. <laughs> Awesome. Get Keanu Reeves to speak. Get Tom Cruise in there. It'd be awesome. All right, we're going to take a break. We'll be back after this. Loveline. Loveline will be right back. So get your problems ready. Ready. What is happening, everybody? Back to Drew. Making a rare appearance. Back in the hizzy after a uh, little whirlwind tour of uh, Vermont. Vermont sounds nice. Yeah, it's pretty boring. Yeah, New York, that's it's boring. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, I went to college, you know, in, in western Massachusetts, which is very much like Vermont. Mm. And then it was in Burlington where um, it's, it's active enough there that um, when you get there, they tell you there's two things to do. You can go to the Vermont Teddy Bear Factory. Or the Coat Factory. Where, by the way... No, there's no there's no Burlington Coat Factory, no. strangely enough. Hmm. Um, you can go to the Teddy Bear Factory. You, mm -hmm. you and I do promotions for every year. And mm -hmm. every radio professional on earth is represented in that factory except you and I. Oh, you mean there's pictures oh, of yeah. everybody. Of course, you and I. <laughs> 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 it's almost funny to think about. Yeah. yeah. And then the other alternative is to go to the Ben & Jerry's uh, Ice Cream Factory. Mm. Which is where I mean, ben, ben, you would think it was IBM. I mean, it's just we have, we have Ben and Jerry's here. Wow, it's an ice cream maker. Yeah, huh? hey, you should have you should have a flavor. I, I should. Yeah, yeah. Um, Tastes like uh, lithium or something. The cough syrup. It feels sort of like a crusty the clown. Triple and, lithium fudge. Yeah, Dr. yeah. Feel good. Yeah. Picture you on there. Yeah. That'd be awesome. I think about this. Yeah. I'd like to come up with my own flavor. And actually, I just like to take um, Chunky Monkey, because here's the deal: you got like Cherry Garcia and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. How about we toss Chunky Monkey? Monkey, there's no no monkey. Plus, I think it's a little derogatory. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. How about just uh, Adam Flatham or something? <laughs> you know what I'm, I'm saying? Doctor Drew's something off Dexter Methorphan. Oh yeah, Doctor Drew's <laughs> Dexter Delight. Dexter Delight. Yeah, <laughs> Rachel. 
Yeah. You're 18? Yeah. You've um, heard of he, vaginal rejuvenation? Yeah, I did. My boyfriend actually brought it up to me. And he was telling me that our sex is not that good anymore because I'm too loose. Oh, my God. Yeah, and then he, like, uh. suggested this vaginal rejuvenation that he read about in the back of, like, some L.A. Weekly or something like that. All right, Rachel, here, here's the deal. A, okay. that is for women that have had babies and vaginal deliveries of babies. Is that you? No. Okay, that's what that is for. It's for rejuvenation after baby. Wow. Okay. I, I did a whole show on this damn thing. You have for, a horrible boy. You have a horrible boyfriend. Exactly. I, that that. And by the way, I talked to a, dozens of men whose wives went through this vaginal rejuvenation, and really none of them had any complaints beforehand. It was all the women who sort of didn't like how they looked, basically. Mm-hmm. Rachel. Uh, yeah. What's wrong with your boyfriend? I don't know. I've been with him for like eight months. Mm-hmm. But um, I maybe this don't... is. But you know, I'm, I'm thinking about how guys' minds work, and maybe this is a diabolical sort of scheme building for the anal sex thing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Actually, mm. actually, he did ask me about that. Yeah, there we go. Interesting. See, I think I'm that's not, what he's up to. I'm, I'm not so hot about trying that. Right. Therefore, honey, we got a choice. We can either do that or you have to have a surgery. Wow. See, this guy's an A-hole. Well, yeah, you want to go under that gamma knife? Actually, there's a good one with laser. It's done in, uh, where the hell did I find this woman? In the vagina. No, no, no. What do you mean? I, North Carolina. Where else would you do it? In North well, Carolina. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, Rachel, this guy's, I don't like this guy. Yeah. What's he, what's he do for a living? Does he sell something? Yeah, he sells clothes. He works at a store. Mm, yeah. Salespeople are horrible people. Does he go to school? Yeah, he does. How old is he? Um, he's 23. Mm, where, what, what's he studying in school? Oh, uh, he's an art student. Mm, studying manipulation of young women. You're 18. He's 23. Yeah. I don't like this guy. I don't trust him. And, and no. what a bizarre thing. For, it's, uh, a, it's sort of a bizarre preoccupation of his. We don't trust the sort of whole impulse, mm -hmm. and and stupid enough to recommend something that's completely out of you know just doesn't make sense. Yeah, what that, what, that what are you going to do? Drop fifty five hundred bucks on this as an eighteen year old woman who's never had a child? Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. There there is no rejuven there is no rejuvenation for the juven. Yeah, you're you're juven. <laughs> you're juvenile. Yeah, I'm from like the country. Is that juven or comes from? Like that. I think he's from uh, down south. Yeah, whatever, Rachel. You're oh, making excuses okay. for him. Well, well he, that explains it then. He's fine. Well, yeah. why'd you say so? He's from South. He's, yeah. yeah. Ever heard of Southern Gentlemen? <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, Groofball. Maybe you deserve this guy. Hey. Hey. Hey, hey. What are you hey. doing? Hold on. I'm smelling junior college on you, baby. Yeah? Hey. Maybe, but no. Yeah. What, what junior college are you going to? Uh, Moore Park. Sha, hold on, hold on, Sha, shocking, <laughs> shocking. My God. All right, please, it, di, di, please uh, dislodge yourself from that abode of the damned and get a job, would you please? Okay. All right. Uh, there we don't go. go. Look, listen, Rachel. listen, stupid people. Don't go to junior college. I was telling people the other night, why don't you just jump headfirst into La Brea Tar Pits? It's a, it's, a, it's a more fruitful way to spend your time. You get more out of it. At least someone will wedge a nickel in your uh, ass once in a while. Yeah, you participate in history that way at least. Yeah, that's right. You're next to a, a styrofoam brontosaurus. It's mm -hmm. awesome. With some McDonald's wrappers stuck to it. Yeah. It's awesome. Sloth. Yeah, sloth. <laughs> you don't hear about the four-toed, just the three-toed. Josh? Yes. You're... Uh, 28? Yes. What's happening? Um, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> me and my wife uh, just got married in February. Mm -hmm. And uh, we want to be, she wants to be more intimate with me um, mm -hmm. in a way that she hasn't been with any other guy, which is uh, with anal. And um, sure. we've tried lubrication, you know, and uh, every time we've tried it, you know, it hurts her. Hold on. Know, and Hold, I, on. And Hold on. on. Hold on. Hold on. Stop. Yes, sir. I, you have a amazing bogus quality to your voice man oh, thanks. yeah and lately my batting average has been really high people just uh, i see through you like rice paper something's up i don't buy it what yeah. do you mean 
Uh oh. Now I, I'm going bogus. Bo Why? Bogus call, Josh. I don't know what you're bad actor. Well, uh, I don't believe on. it. What, what's your question? Well, my question is, um, like, is there anything else other than lubrication that we can use for uh, anal sex? That's the thing I wanted to ask. Like uh, car wax or something, or I don't know chicken don't, fat, I don't or know what's out there. Really, the only thing I really know about with that particular kind of uh, sex is uh, just regular lubrication. Right, and, and um, you, you want to, you know, because like my wife is really. You want to step um, up to like a synthetic or a multi grade? Uh, yeah, something like that. <laughs> well, I, I there, there, you know, here, here's the thing. Uh, Penzoil makes one for high mileage ass. <laughs> she got over 100,000 miles. Josh, what's oh. up? What do you do? I am uh, I work as a waiter, and I'm also uh, going to school as well. I'm mm -hmm. learning to become a psychologist. Okay. Learning to become a psychologist. All right. What is that? There's something very insincere about you. But learning to become a psychologist? What does that mean, even? Well, well, psychology. I'm, I'm going to school right now to try to become a... Uh, I want to learn to help uh, kids with special needs. Okay. All right. Well, that's not necessarily a psychologist. Well, it's, he wants to help. There's nothing wrong with that. And like that, like to help himself to some anal, too, while he's helping the kids. When he's not helping the kids, he's helping himself to some anal. Josh. Yes. Have you uh, ever been with a guy? No. Ever thought about it? No. Not, uh, not in your vocabulary? No. It's, nothing, huh? Uh, I have a lot of gay friends. I'm a waiter, obviously, so I have a lot of gay friends, but other than that... Hmm. All right, so here's the How many the women have you been with? Oh, <laughs> How dare you? At least 50. At least 50? Uh-huh. No, not the oldest one you've been with. The oldest one I've been with? No, we're looking for numbers. Uh, the oldest uh, lady I was with, uh, I, was, I was 20 and she was 40. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Did she have a penis? A what? Okay. Listen, Josh, here's yeah. the thing. All right, we're busting your chops. We our, our spider sense is tingling with you, but but here's the thing: no, uh, ever get molested when you were a child by a male? Yes, I did. Oh, there it was. There, there it was. It we heard that on. Yeah. You. Yes. I, I, I yes, kept okay. pounding on. I got molested uh, um, when I was real, when I was younger, and I also got raped when I was seventeen by a male. Seventeen. Uh huh. Oh my God. How do you, what, at gunpoint, a knife point or something? Well, like, well, I've never, uh, this guy was a friend of mine, supposedly a friend, and um, <clears throat> he was teaching me how to become a better singer. I was in choir at the time, <clears throat> and uh, he, um, I never drank any kind of alcohol at that time. Uh, I really, I grew up in a really small, small community, and mm -hmm. uh, I, he took me off to the side. He said uh, he was having a heart attack. He wanted to, um, he was going to have uh, either A, a heart attack or something with his heart was going to kill him. How and, old was uh, this guy? I uh, don't even remember. It's I mean, is he a 50-year-old guy? No, he wasn't that old. He was probably about in his uh, late 20s, early 30s. Uh-huh. And he's a friend and, of yours. Yeah. He said he was going to well, have he, a heart attack? He, he was a friend of the teachers, and he became a friend of mine because he was helping me with my... Uh, mm -hmm. singing lessons and whatnot, because he was an uh, opera singer. Mm -hmm. and, he said he was going to uh, die. Right. That? Yeah, he keep told going. He told you he was going to die. An interesting story. But um, he uh, he took me down to the beach. You know, he was telling me, like, what was going on. He wanted to put me on his life insurance policy. And uh, right before we went down to the beach, though, he bought some alcohol. And because uh, at first we were walking up to the store, he asked me, you know, what I want to drink. I told him what kind of soda I want. He goes, no, what do you want to drink? Are you cool? I'm like, mm. Um, mm. do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And he basically, uh, well, he didn't force the alcohol down my throat, obviously. I, I right. drank it willingly, and uh, I got smashed, and he uh, raped me. Wow. And, and, I mean, you look at yourself as being raped. Uh-huh. Very much okay. so, because yeah. I was telling him, don't do this, stop, da-da-da. Right. Okay. But he's already been victimized as a kid. So, right, you know. right. Who victimized you when you were a kid? No, he didn't victimize me. No, I, was I said who? Actually, by a family member. Who did? Ugh. Oh, boy. That's horrible. All right. Hey, now, Josh, I, so... I was, uh, molested, uh, I was molested and uh, abused mentally and physically when I was a kid. All right, so you... And, right. and now you want to go into a field where you can help children that have been abused. Yes, exactly. All right, that's noble. Um, 
And that's usually, it's either that or start molesting other people. Right. So right. Don't do that. Yeah, okay. All right, so, and you're married. How's that relationship going, your marriage? Oh, it's great. It's the best relationship I've ever been before in my life. All right. All right. So don't worry about the anal sex. Yeah, you guys are intimate enough. Yeah, the, the, having anal sex doesn't make it more intimate, okay? But what? Well, you know, I, I know that, but like my... All right, water-soluble lube, they ain't going to do better than that. No, I, I guess there are, you know, there are graduated... <laughs> plugs or something you could use so you know i mean the crazy things you can do it if you demand that act yeah uh, you know i was trying to consult with a store that sells these things i'm sure they have paraphernalia but yeah. the fact is that doesn't make things more intimate no now, now if she's the, needs yeah. that is into that but then she wouldn't be it wouldn't be too painful for her then so yeah not okay. for her we gotta wrap up but yeah here's Ooh, the thing we we heard something with him we got it whoa yeah, it was like I was pound. I wrote "gay" down. I was pounding on it. R yeah, uh, Drews, Drews, uh, Gaydar was on. Yeah, G Gago Counter was uh, okay. off the me off the charts. So he's not really gay, but he had all that. No, but then I asked if he was abused yeah, because there was something. Now here's the thing, everyone. I know we we sound like uh, pompous asses, but Drew and I just hear voices. We don't see people. We don't see how they're dressed or what kind of car they pulled up in. Or, or what, how they chose to present themselves. We just hear their voice, and their voice sort of and makes us feel makes us a feel certain us. way. Yeah. And we felt, first I felt like he was insincere. I felt he was BSing, but, but I think just, that's... He was he disconnected. Was, he's disconnected, yeah. right, which is what happens when you get mm -hmm. sexually abused by a family member mm -hmm. for a long period of time. But then Drew felt gay, but then... And by the way... Uh, We've not closed uh, the chapter or the book on uh, young Josh. I no. I wonder if uh, he's a six pack away from another tryst with uh, another one of the co workers, another, yeah. another rape, perhaps. But anyway, whatever it was, is we heard something weird in his voice. And, uh, and, and you know what was nice? He was very forthright yeah, with yeah. the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. And it's, a, it's heavy stuff to talk about on the radio. God bless him. And no, and there's nothing worse for us than to go, did something happen to you? No, nope, no, never did. Then yeah. we walk away thinking we need to recalibrate yeah. ourselves. Instead, we feel like geniuses and we're empowered. All right. Sorry, Josh. Water soluble. And uh, God bless. Thank you. Take a uh, little break. And we'll be right back after this. Thank you for calling Loveline. Your call will be answered in the order it seems interesting. Call Loveline. Call Loveline. Call Loveline. Love one nine one. Huh? Yeah. Hey, everybody! It's Loveline. <laughs> I can't get out of bed. I'm gonna, I, I got I got about a year off, so everyone around me is going to have to just step it up a little bit. And by the way, I don't want any change in lifestyle. I'm going to fly my model planes for a year. Take some time to find myself. I'm overwhelmed. Uh, I have uh, chronic fatigue syndrome and uh, whatever else, some sort of joint thing, phantom <laughs> joint pains. I got to relax. Drew said to relax. Take a year off. Take a year off. Hey, phone number one eight hundred L O V E one nine one. Doctor Drew in the his a. Those of you listening on the West Coast, Discovery Health Channel at midnight tonight, please. Yeah. The orgasm show. Awesome show. I didn't, uh, let's see. Well, yeah, I'm going to TiVo it. No, you've seen this one, I think. I've seen it. Awesome. Steve? Yeah. 19? Yeah. What's up? Um, I've been taking steroids for about mm -hmm. a month and a half now, and mm -hmm. my balls, they came up, like they shrunk up. They didn't shrink. They just, you know, like they were cold, you know? And, um... Hmm. They, they shrank. Let's well, be, let's yeah. be fair. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, um, I was told that, well, they'll come down eventually, but... Yeah, when you stop doing steroids. Oh, duh. Although I've seen situations where they don't, actually. Hold on. S Steve, is, is this a bogus call, or are you just kind of a jackass? Well, I'm a jackass for taking steroids, for one, but... No, it's All not right. bogus. I've been All taking right. steroids for a month and a half, and, um... Why? Yeah. Why? Um, I've been a skinny kid. I don't know, mm. through sixth grade all the way up. I've been, I worked out through that whole time, and my body type, you don't gain. Right. You gain a little muscle, but you don't show. So right. I started taking it. But, um, big difference? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I uh, gained a lot of weight. Probably about an extra 35 pounds in a matter of a month. And, uh, wow. I don't know. But, anyways, um, even, during sex, even during sex, my balls never came down. 
Yeah, Steve, your your testicles shrink. Your body's been taken over by a, an androgen. You give yourself, <laughs> in other words, what your body normally produces, you've now flooded your system with. Mm -hmm. So the organs that produce that shut down, and when they shut down, they kind of shrink up. Mm -hmm. And that is your testes. Hey, I was watching, uh, so no duh, like you said. Right. I was watching uh, Real Sports, and they did an interesting story, which is uh, interviewed a bunch of guys who sort of, did steroids responsibly yeah. and everyone has a you know that reaction or knee-jerk reaction to it but according to this story there hasn't been a lot of definitive data produced on long-term steroid use and i know people do that hey lyle alzado died of a brain tumor yeah. well a lot of people, you know, my my wife's friend died five years ago. Yeah. She didn't do any no, steroids. No, we don't know. You, you know don't what I mean? know the long-term effects. Sometimes 45-year-old guys have brain tumors. Right. Sometimes 25-year-old guys have brain tumors. Right. You know, it's not. And, yes, those guys did steroids or those guys could have smoked or they could have drank cognac. But it doesn't necessarily mean. Yeah. And Our they, governor did a lot of steroids. They, so, right. Yeah. They talked to uh, George Dumagin. <laughs> Who's our governor? <laughs> the the point the point is, or is it Sam Yorty? The point is, is they talk to guys who are like I, you know, I've used it for thirty years. I use it correctly, and I'm in the best health of my life. I'm seventy years old. I'm having a lot of muscle mass. It, this used responsibly, ma? We don't know what that means. That's the problem, right? We and we assume means. it's bad. But what they're saying is, is well, it's not really. I mean, people just do that. Oh, steroids are going to kill you, kind of thing. I know we got to take a break. But there's not really long-term whatever. Well, let's, let's pick up the discussion. We'll talk okay. About. We'll talk about that after this. Buddy, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Who? Dr. Drew! Yeah. Yeah. Sat around here with uh, Dr. Uh, ben and Bruce. Dr. Uh, Marcel. Well, how's Marcel? Uh, Marcel's good. I mean, you know, actually, Marcel's actually fairly quiet. Uh, but when you, you know, he has answers. Any new procedures or anything he wants to promote? Um... Let's see. Anything with the laser, the boobs? Yeah, I figured those no. were the two areas he'd be talking about. No. The, yeah. uh, you know, silicone's back. Yeah. And uh, safer than ever. Never really was dangerous. And it's one of those things that we talked about, which is uh, like many things in our society that uh, you people just take as gospel sometimes because you see some stat or you see hear somebody's story on Oprah and it's real easy. It's like, uh, look, I was living in the house, and then the mold started right. taking over. Right. The the killer mold started, and I had asthma. My child had asthma. They had to be rushed to the. I had to rush them to the emergency hospital. We had to move out into a hotel. Here's all I hear. All I hear. All everyone else hears the story. I just hear, I'm nuts. I'm <laughs> nuts. I'm nuts. And once in a while, I'm goddamn nuts. <laughs> you know, they underscore. Yeah, you're nuts. But but getting back to the, over, the boob, overstating and, data. Yeah, well, it takes us back to the steroid discussion. Well, hold on. The boob, the stuff, the stuff with the silicone versus the saline. Silicone was never dangerous. It was just nutty broads, same ones that I guarantee. I would love to look into their histories with oh, the yeah. environmental, sexual abuse. Sexual abuse. Yeah. Of course, they got the boob job in the first place, which could. I mean, puts them on a list, a large list, but a list of we should take a closer look Remember, at them. Remember, that was back in the day where that was an exotic procedure, too. Well, that's true, too. I mean, here's the deal. Boob jobs, dime a dozen now, back in the day. when they started complaining about this stuff. People, people getting the boob jobs, that was a certain that was list a female, of crazy. That was female impersonator. Right. So uh, I guarantee these are the same people with all these syndromes that never really no doctor can ever get to the bottom of and never show up. Here's my feeling. If it don't show up at the, on an x-ray, you don't got it. Well, That's the way now, I now look at it. you're talking like Tom Cruise, though. That's right. He's my hero. Okay. Him and uh, Keanu. <laughs> point break. Anyway, this, awesome the, the, the steroid thing is, mm. the point is well taken, that we yes. really don't know the risks of steroids. It's it's very hard to document that the the use patterns are all over the place. It's clear that high-dose, long-term, bad thing. 
And I made mm -hmm. the comment to Adam. I said, "You where, where are all the Mr. Mr. Americas, Mr. Universes from 10, 20 years ago? They're gone. Well, dead. Well, where? But you know, where's uh, Billy Ray Cyrus? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, He's yeah, alive I mean, somewhere. I just right. don't know where he is. All right, be that as it may, a, a lot of Florida. If they're alive, though, I'm going with Florida. They're probably big doses of things, and they, they, there are smaller things. There's different kinds of things now. And do these things really have long term? We, we, we don't know. I have a general philosophy that if there's not, if you're not treating a disease state. You could only have a negative effect. Well, but here's okay. I got a couple things to say about that. First off, you know I'm sitting here with Doctor Ben, the uh, Vag Doc, yeah. and he's telling me, you know, about how um, you know women can control their periods right. uh, via the you know the hormone and yeah. birth control, and that it's common practice now, and they don't really even think that women need to have their periods right. really anymore. And you know, I say to him, "Well, does it seem weird that you're sort of ingesting a hormone and sort of controlling your flow?" And he's like. No, yeah, it's good. It's healthy. There's nothing wrong with it. So sometimes you can kind of monkey with yourself, yeah. and it turns out eh, yeah. it's kind of better for you. Because yeah. I and I think a lot of people had this and still have this thought about like birth control. Like, come on, now you're playing God. You're, you're going on a honeymoon, so you're stopping your period, or you've decided to do away with your periods altogether. Yeah, kind of thing. I know it's a different thing. I'm no scientist. Yes, I'm just a humble broadcaster, but I'm saying philosopher it almost warrior. a philosopher warrior. It sort of falls under the same heading, which is look, you're monkeying and manipulating, and as it turns out, doesn't seem to be any any fiddler to pay for this manipulation, at least with the ladies. This this a little bit different, but it was a very interesting story where they said, "Where is the data?" Where is the long-term data? Where the, the research papers? Yeah, yeah on there. male steroids. Where it? Where? Where the? Where's? We don't where have is it? it? Yeah, and I, and it's a knee-jerk thing, which is this is bad. This is wrong. Yeah, you're you're right. playing God. No, no, you're looking for an true. unfair advantage. This is not the American way. You're trying to cheat the system, and you will be punished. Yeah. And it's really almost a religious philosophy, which is, oh yeah, go ahead and whore it up now. Have fun. I'll see you in hell. Well, but there, but there is, in fact, in nature, in human biology, you don't get a free lunch. I've said this a million times. It's I, always I, a price to be paid for things. And here's here's the deal with the not the, always. Uh, but here's the deal with the with the with the female hormones. For instance, you're trying to prevent, for the most part, you're trying to prevent a pregnancy, which is a dangerous state. You're well, trying to prevent, and yeah. there are long term studies with women. You have both. You have you have something. Yet, and it's not completely risk free. People have strokes. People have clots. They, they, it's not like it's a zero risk. Yeah, but but it, the it, risk of pregnancy is also quite substantial. Well, but they're they're doing it, and they're manipulating and controlling themselves, and it and there seems to be no adverse effect or long term so, so effect. How they manipulate it, not to just whether you do it or don't do it. In other words, taking birth control pills, cycling it is no different than not cycling it. Yeah. But taking birth control pills versus not taking birth control pills, yeah, there are some risks of taking birth well, control pills. Well, but you pills. yourself always say that it's probably safer than to, pregnancy. Well, not not only than pregnancy, but that it can lower certain that there are some health benefits. Other health yes, benefits. There are some health benefits. That probably it. evens out. Yes. Point evens is, out is, is the point. there are things we do all the time in medicine that are as sort of manipulating yeah, the yeah. body, cheating death. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, give me your bone marrow. Time. We're going to put it in my body. All that that kind of thing. This is a this is has to do with vanity and, and cosmetics, uh, in a sense. But one could also argue that the Maybe seven year old guy who's on yeah. the juice has more muscle mass than most fifty year old guys. Yeah. So therefore stronger, able to maybe. resist, uh, maybe, you know, if this guy slips in his bathtub, he's not breaking a hip. He's okay. breaking the tub. Point well taken. All right, so all I'm saying is is I need some juice. Okay, no, so all, I have to score for you on that front, uh, too? All I'm saying is is we, we have sort of knee-jerk reactions yes. to this like right. we do to cockroaches. You're right. And then you stop and you go, anyone ever get attacked by a cockroach no. or bitten by a cockroach or anyone killed by a cockroach? You know, you know yeah. what I mean? You go, yeah, yeah. all right, well, all right. let's just take a look. It's, it's ugly, so we don't like it. Mm -hmm. Brooke? Hi. What is oh up? You're, tw you're 20. Yeah, I'm so excited to be talking to you guys. I've listened to you guys forever. Ever wow. since nice. Adam was saying the, uh, the world is your oyster. Yeah. I bet that's still on tape. Oh, are you kidding? Anderson's played it 28 times since you've been gone. Uh, the world is your oyster. I mean, because that's all the world is. <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have a question for you guys. Uh, um, the world is your oyster. I mean, because that's all the world is. <laughs> okay. I, um, yeah. I've been in a relationship 
with this guy for a while, and um, I'm very much in love, and he's very much in love with me, and our sex is very good. But he takes a very long time to to reach orgasm, mm -hmm. a very long time, mm -hmm. like 45 minutes. And now I thought you said your I, I thought your sex was good. It's, it's it uh, is, but it, you how know, good could it be when it when it's taking a very long? I mean, very long yeah. time. Like, ouch. Yeah. How could yeah, that be good? Wow, it starts to hurt, and right. Yeah, your oyster gets sore. Oh. Yeah, and <laughs> mm -hmm. he doesn't understand why I don't want to have sex three and four times in one week. I, I know. Only want to do it but once it's the greatest. <laughs> it's fan so fantastic, though. And I just it's I awesome. don't know what I could do to make him go faster. Mm. Well, what's up? But I probably nothing. You, is he? Uh, he may be able to do something though. Is he? Uh, has he been with many ladies beside you? No, I'm his first. Ooh. Yeah, see, that's what it is. See, these guys—they've been beating. Is he? Is he? Um, is he circumcised? Yeah, he is. These guys that have been beating off for nine years before they. How old is he? He is twenty-one. Twenty-one nine years, years, first lady. Nine years. Yeah, make it eleven years. <laughs> no, it, 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 seriously, the guy's been beating off since thirteen. Yeah, maybe fourteen. He has, you know, his Logged seven, a few hours. seven, eight years under his belt. And by the way, those are the gravy, gravy years. Put I that mean, in, put that in man hours. Oh, hold on a second. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna give. <laughs> it's comical. I'm gonna give the guy the benefit of the doubt and say he started beating off at fifteen. Just. Just no, no. Okay, let's call 14, it 14. 14. Let's call it 14. So let's give it seven full years. Let's give it... Let's give it eight, eight, eight years. He's 21. Well, let's just give it... Whatever. Let's just give him seven, seven years okay. beaten off. Right. Okay. Uh, at, uh, you Again, know... three times a week, Ben for the down. Yeah, I'm just going to say, because uh, there, there's no such thing as weekends when you're beaten off. Every, say times every day a is a work day when you're beaten off. You know, you know what I mean? 100 times a year. Oh, no. 200 times a year? No, yeah, I no, yeah, no, yeah. Two hundred. No, I I was basically just gonna go daily. Okay, all right, three. I mean, you go it. daily when you're when you're fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Just give three hundred. Well, give, and then we're, you're, we're gonna go conservative. You're nineteen and you're not getting laid. All right, okay, three hundred times okay, seven. Twenty one hundred times the guy has orgasmed without you. And put that in man hours. The guy that takes forty five minutes. <laughs> oh well, no, that's the, no. It's three thousand man hours. No, but he doesn't. Yeah, he could have built a uh, suspension bridge it, across the easily, Potomac. Easily. But here's himself. But here's the thing. Here's the <laughs> sunk the caissons the first thousand times you beat off. And then the suspension, the actual steel uh, structure. <laughs> but, no, but here's the whole thing. 3,000 man hours. No, no, no. I'll tell you why. Because when the guy's alone, it takes him four minutes because he's honed yeah. that skill. Yeah, yeah. all right. Your stepmom coming down the hall. You right. got you got to move fast. So he has to bring himself to that point and then bring her into the action, or use her as though she were his hand. Yeah, yeah. One or the other. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Well, let's talk uh, to Brooke. Brooke. Yeah. So he is. A, does he masturbate? He will go like a whole week without mas masturbating. Really. Trying. Yeah, like he's trying to his, save something for you. Yeah, yeah, and I told him, I say, no, masturbate, whack away. I <laughs> don't wait for me because if I'm only doing it once a week with him, mm -hmm. that, you know, no. that's, yeah. that's going to no. take like two hours. You know, well, no, no, no. It's, no. It's, he's trying. He's trying to make it quicker by waiting. See, yeah. Oh, I mean, I guess because I'm I'm more sexually experienced. Than he is. Yeah. I had three other partners before him. Well, listen, hold on a second. Drew's coffee mug is more sexually experienced <laughs> than he is. <laughs> Everyone is more sexually experienced. He has the same experience as newborns, <laughs> or, or, as as experienced as he is sexually before he Aww. met you. <laughs> well, no, that's all right. But he needs to figure this out. Here's what here's what you need to do. Yeah. I, I I think here's where the answer lies. What? Position does he masturbate in, or did he when he was going through high school? Um, does, I think um, lying down, lying on his back. Yeah. Then you got to get on top of him. Okay. You understand? Can you do that? Yeah, yeah. Because he's yeah. inverted otherwise. Oh. It's so not this my guy. Position, but well, but here's the thing: this guy has 2,100 orgasms on his back. Mm -hmm. 
something. Yeah. You're going to flip him over like a turtle. You know, what we never talk about. I realize is hmm. the the position preference that people have and why. Mm-hmm. Why is that? Well, my dad was a doggy man. Well, so it's an inherited thing, or you or and his just, dad before him. So it's inherited because you didn't know your dad. You never saw your grand. Well, maybe my dad, your grandpa, doing it. Well, you're, you're implying that you know. Yeah, I said it was genetic. Well, you said, the, the, well, grandpa the, well no, it's, but we have old photos, old pictures, and, uh, and there's some portraits. Uh, and some, uh, actually, uh, my gr- great great grandfather was actually in the Civil War and did is it. Is that that it's thing like you, awesome. you got at your house that, that it's, it's sort of in the there's a silhouette inside and you spin it, it's got little slats on it, and all of a sudden there's grandpa moving. At, yeah, you've got to put a candle in there. Right, now. right, right, right. Yeah, and oh, that's awesome. what he's doing. I, I couldn't make it out. Well, that's my that's, that's my great. It's a, it's uh, Ulysses Eubanus. <laughs> So it's my mother's side. Corolla. <laughs> no, Eubangus is my mother's maiden name. <laughs> There's Angus Eubangus. <laughs> He's a great man. Friendly fire. Got a musket. Trying to free the slaves. But uh, Ulysses and uh, Angus Eubangus were both... And he was trying to free Amos Eubangus? Amos, Ulysses, took, and Angus was... Eubangus. Oh, great. The whole Eubangus <laughs> clan. Uh-huh. All doggy-style men. <clears throat> and uh, Came in through your mom's side, too. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Actually, my one of the... I thought it was the Y chromosome that caused no, the... No, no. And, fish. you know, back then, you know, they didn't have, <sighs> you know, carpeting, you know, with padding and everything. So my my, my grandfather, repl- you know, he gave me his uh, his knee towel. Oh. Oh, yes. Almost must worn. Oh, well, you can see light through it. Is that what you need? Worn. I, thought, I thought that was shrapnel on your grandpa's knee. No, no. Oh. That's why he walks with a limp. Yeah, oh he's a doggy man from way back then. <sighs> But, you know, the beds were so high that you couldn't do it up on the bed. So you just, you know, had that oak plank floor. Of course. Oh, yeah. Oh, a splinter. You know, didn't, didn't have 10. I thought it was like the side of a ship that came in. No, there. didn't have 10K. Oh, for God's sakes. Yeah, didn't have uh, a bunch of polyurethane on it either. It was just tongue oil. <laughs> it take the skin right off your knee. Yeah. Anyway. That's yeah. something we never talk about. <laughs> no, we never. But we never. Isn't it interesting how people, I mean, I mean, and Brooks sort of bought that show. Oh, no, 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 that's not for me. I don't like that on top stuff. We have other women who's like, eh, top, that's it. That's, mm. that's the way I do it. Yeah. What is that? I, I don't know, but. And uh, it's not always about how My great feels. uncle Adolf, you uh. bang us, he actually died in the doggy position. <laughs> oh, so you, all of them. <clears throat> yeah, he was so vigorous that they actually knocked a lantern down and, uh, you know, wow. I mean, it was just a Even fire. Gustavo? You bang us? Gustavo, Adolf, uh, Angus, <laughs> his wife Eunice, <laughs> you bang us. All of them. They all perished in the fire. The fire? Yeah. The fire. The fire. It's very sure. tragic. Sure. So vigorous. It, like I said, it I see. Just toppled, the floor on fire. toppled the lantern, the oil oh, went everywhere. No chance of getting out. Floor no, oil. no, okay, please. Sorry, I beg your pardon. That's outrageous. All right, where so, uh, so Brooke? So back, back to the position thing. Should we? Oh, okay. Explore this a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, Brooke. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Brooke. Yeah. Yeah. What is your position? I like doggy style. Well, you may be a Ubangus. <laughs> you're you're an honorary Ubangus. I'll tell you that right now. All right. You only know it's my mother's maiden name. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I like I like doggy style just because. Um, it just it feels better. Mm-hmm. It feels better. So it's, a, it's not it's not some sort of experiential thing. It's how it no. actually the actual how it feels. Yeah, and then I just get really into it, and it's easier like role play and stuff like that. Oh, no, see, that's a whole different element. Mm-hmm. But what's, what's the role you're playing? I Famous don't you bangers. Talk about that. Okay, it's a Civil War act. It, it, it's, no, it's I know. An old family well, tradition. Now we can do the Civil War reenacting. <laughs> well, what do you? Now, now you piqued my curiosity. Hmm. <laughs> Um, mm. like, I don't know. I mean, I'm kind of like, my boyfriend's very much into, like, the, the naughty schoolgirl uh, Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You yeah. Know, she has to stay after class. She gets yeah. in trouble. Got to bend yeah. someone over her desk. Wow, Brooke. <laughs> Sister, you bang us. Wow. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, uh, let me tell you what's on the Eubangus crest. What? I, I think I know. <laughs> just uh just a spread ass cheek <laughs> actually <laughs> facing your know, face front front facing just spread like you're actually the using rain, the, the hands pulling in <laughs> light light coming out and uh 
Yeah, and then on 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 top is the Mason's pyramid. So like this through the light. Okay. Yeah, it's the light coming out of his red cheeks. All right, Brooke. So yes. you, you got the advice there. It's you get him. He's got to do what he normally has done by himself and bring you into if it. If so he beats speak. off on his back, then you must get on top. That's where he or, will or find else his organ. Masturbate to the point where he's about to go. And yeah, and, but if if you spend all your time masturbating on your back and then all of a sudden you're standing up, it's funky time. All right, Alexis, the answer. Twenty one, Alexis. Yes. Hi. What's up? What's up? Well. I used to be a dancer for almost two years, and mm-hmm. my first couple of days of dancing, I met someone and actually went out with him, and it turned really serious. Mm-hmm. I was in on and off, kind of broke up and whatever, and basically I have really high standards as far as the kind of guys I like, and mm-hmm. Dr. Drew, this question is kind of for you because you're a man of passion like me. Mm-hmm. I don't really like being with guys. I've been with a lot of people because I've only been with one other person besides the guy I was dating. And, what kind of, well, um, what kind of dancer were you? Or I'm are you? Dancer. I was to- an exotic dancer. Topless and bottomless? Yeah. I was at a nude club, no alcohol, 18 Oh, you're doing it at a nude club, not, <laughs> not, not like a temple or something like that. <laughs> no, so it was an actual club yeah. with nude people. Oh, okay, okay, well, that's good. Right. Well, so it's not, not like a Cinnabon or anything confusing. at the airport? Yeah. No. Okay. All right, fantastic, and not like a, a home for troubled kids or something like that. Like no, a not at all. House or methadone <laughs> clinic. Okay, awesome. It's coming into focus. All right, so you're, you're but totally nude. Uh, yeah, it was like the dance, the lap dances weren't nude, just on stage. Mm-hmm. How long were you there for? <clears throat> a year and a half. I was at a little, almost two years. I was um, at two different clubs. But you met somebody mm-hmm. right away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like the first. Three days. What are the two club names? Because they usually don't disappoint. Are you sure? Can I just say? Just say the two club names, yeah. Okay. Um, Minx and Cheetahs. What? M- Minx and Cheetahs. <laughs> you know, did you ever get over to Eubanguses? <laughs> no. no. All right. All right, that's good. Minx is hot. What do you do? Like uh, Minx with an X? Yeah. Awesome, Perfect. and they, you know what they always do? It was a really, really little, like little, little, little place. It's like <laughs> ten girls top for dinner. And let me tell you what happened with strip clubs. Strip clubs are there are certain businesses that were designed in certain time periods, and that's it. Like every recording studio I've ever been at, every radio station we ever go to was bad '70s yes. ski chalet, it's a crappy rough sawn tongue and groove cedar all over the place and yes. everything just looks like a Robert Redford movie from the mid 70s when did the strip bars come in uh, 80s uh. Miami Vicing mm-hmm. it's always neon it's a lot of pinks mm-hmm. and greens Velvet and stuff. oranges uh, yeah. yeah it's very it's super you know those like 80s videos where the chicks have too much makeup and they look they look so like they're gonna bite you uh. or just uh, it, it all looks like like sort of mid 80s huh. Duran Duran porn. Interesting. It, it's sort of Duran Duran meets Miami Vice. It's it's always like a lot of neon and day glow and the carp. Everything's sort of the carpet is always like sort of a day glow green and orange. It's sort of black lights and everything. Mm-hmm. It all looks like nineteen. The buildings are all the same. Everything looks like it was built in nineteen eighty six. Mm. Interesting. And and then they don't vary at all. So they need to come up with a new uh, theme. Yeah. Yeah, or at least maybe go to 87. Right. Start moving toward the date that we're actually at. Right, right. Although by the time you get here, it'll be 225 when you get to 205. Of course. But it, it's it, it's weird. They're all, and I guess, uh, obviously, you can't just put the, you know, the white Berber down. You have right. to have that multicolored whatever because God knows what well, has lands be, on that car, but it doesn't all show up. Of, uh, it sort of harkens to some sort of uh, 1890s brothel. Purple velvet, blah blah. Yeah, but yeah. it's weird. It, it's 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 weird, Florida. You, yeah, you yeah. know, it's not old west velvet. Right, right. It it's sort of bad day glow. Right, right. Velvet and neon. Interesting. It, oh, it's 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 sort of nauseating. Mm. You know what? It all it all looks like it's just like a bad cheesy Hawaiian cocktail. Mm. Everything just seems like it, the wrong color. Mm. Weird. You know what I mean? All right. I have to do something about that. Yeah. So anyway, what's your deal, Alexis? Is yeah. A question. Oh. What's, what's the question, Alexis? Um, basically, he's not even a person of all that great character, and he just thinks so little of me because I did that. And I'm noticing more and more people are kind of 
anyone I've ever told about that just looks at me really bad. And I want to eventually be with a really nice guy that hasn't mm-hmm. slept with more than one or two people. And mm. I, what what I, happened you know, to you that, that led you down that path? And why is it different now? As far as why I quit? No, wh- what, what, what got why did you, you in a totally new yeah, dancing? Why didn't you see any boundaries? Why, why were your boundaries so sort of um, oh, I, porous? Um, well, I'm really smart. You know, I'm going to UCSB, but it's just I was really low on money. My roommate kind of no, no, said, hey, no, 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 no. no. Everybody, I really don't know. I mean, Dude, what kind I of family? You, coming, what kind of family did you come I'm from? I'm going to give you two choices: either you were sexually abused, or just dad just abandoned. And mom was and the family. Was intrusive. The, the super and, abandoned dad. Either well, either he was around, he was drunk all the time, and he was always looking at stock quotes, or he just took off when you were two. My parents are okay. It's just that they had joint custody, so I spent one week with my mom and one week with my dad, of, mm-hmm. like almost my whole life. So that it was kind of like, mm-hmm. weird, you know. I didn't really get to know either of them all that well. Wow. Well, what does your dad do for a living? What does he's he do? A, he's a mediator for the courts. Mm. And mm-hmm. anything bad ever happened to you growing up? And how old were you? Lost your virginity? Um, I was married. I waited till I was married. I was. I am divorced now. Obviously, I was um, a month before I turned nineteen. That was when you lost your virginity. Yeah. You got married at eighteen. Yes, I did. And how was that guy? He's great. He's such a nice guy. But I just did it for all the wrong reasons. Like, oh, well, oh, he's a nice guy. I couldn't tolerate it. Right. You have to have the chaos. So, what, what's your dad like? My dad, um, he's a good guy. He's married now. He's just kind of, he was always my friend. He wasn't really, he wasn't your dad. Really try to punish me or anything like that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, not a dad. Not, not coming together for us, though. You, you Something still, going on. Yeah, still needs to be things a little worse than you're portraying them to. Uh, to my know. mom's an alcoholic. There we go. That's now, how you're coming into focus. All right. Now, here we go now. Yeah. Let's get some abuse now. Let's go. <laughs> a little sexual abuse. Oh. Come your, on, baby. Was your mom a little horrible something? when she was drinking? Was she awful? Uh, yeah, she was a really okay. successful woman, but yeah, she was really bad in she drank. All right, well, there we go. Any then, evil uh, step dudes rolling around or bad boyfriends on mom's side? No, my mom didn't really date. Mm, just preoccupied. But but the, the alcohol. Yeah, I, was, I was at home. I was at home a lot by myself. Yeah. All right. All right. L- abandoned. Latchkey, abandoned, All right. alcoholic abusive mom. It starts to add yeah, up. Right. So. Yeah, we're making a case. Wow. So here's the thing, uh, Alexis. Whatever guys you meet, don't don't give them the whole talk about the exotic, you know, dancing over at uh, Minx and Cheetahs. Yeah, if you've changed since those times, you, you have now have boundaries. That. You've been, maybe you've had some therapy or something, and you actually perceive boundaries, and you understand why that you know that doesn't feel like such a great idea to go out and do those things because you're short on cash. Don't and don't, but don't tell any new guys about your past. You don't have to. It's you know, look, but but make sure she's changed. That she does actually see right. boundaries now. But here's the thing: them. these. You not telling people about stuff you did before you met them is not harboring secrets. Right. Unless you have a venereal disease or something, then you have to say something. Whatever you did in the past is your business. The you next first of all, thing get is, rid of this guy you're with. You've got to get, get rid, rid of this guy. guy. And then the next thing is, is don't plan on finding a guy who's had you know one and a half or under sex partners, uh, especially as he gets into his mid twenties. Yeah, uh, you're gonna get have a social retard. Yeah. As long as he can be faithful and he's a good guy, then he's a good guy. Yeah. All right, let's uh, let's take a break. Still, just want to say hi to uh, Gustavo. I had a great uncle, Gustavo Ubangas, too. So it just reminded me, Gustavo. Hey, how's it going? All right, let's take ourselves a little <laughs> break. We'll uh, be right back after this. Thank you for calling Loveline. Your call will be answered in the order it seems interesting. Call Loveline. Call Loveline. Eight hundred love one nine one. Everybody, love line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Next week, uh, Bobby Brown may be in here. Dag in here tomorrow night. Nice. I know him as uh, my main man. Mm-hmm. You guys know him as David Allen Greer. Rob Zombie's coming up. Uh, uh, Hoping for Bobby Brown. <laughs> be awesome. 
He's scheduled. He's scheduled and sketchy. Who are we talking to, Drew? Mike. Mike. Mike, you're 22. Yeah, how's it going, guys? What's up? Uh, well, basically, I've been with my girlfriend for five years. Uh, mm-hmm. In the last two years, I've kind of been, uh, you know, browsing online, looking at porn and whatnot, and I came across sure. a transsexual website, and uh, I'm kind of sexually interested mm-hmm. in transsexuals, I guess. So I'm just curious if I should question my sexuality. If it's well, you're me, you're or, interested in it. Yeah. My interest, Mike's, yeah. yeah. Um, well, um, what's your history? You got some abuse stuff going on? Uh, no, I never knew my dad until he was dead. And basically, I, I guess he turned out to be homosexual. Hmm. That's, that, that's got to be a rough introduction, too, yeah. by the way. Mike, <laughs> uh, this is your deceased uh, gay dad. Hi, Dad. And his he shakes his hand, his arm falls off. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's very vivid. Yeah, very vivid. Tough it's very difficult. Saying, yeah. um, so, Mike, here's the thing about this. Um, I don't think it makes you gay, Per se, there are a few things that we know, such as cross-dressing, or perhaps being attracted to certain people, that sound gay. That society makes gay, but doesn't necessarily make you gay. Like cross-dressing guys, I don't even know what percentage of them are gay, but it's not even really that high percentage, right. is it? And this tranny thing is not about sexual orientation so much as it makes you effed up. Yes. I don't think it makes you gay. It makes you a little confused about your about your what, what's attracting what's attracting you. And right. that usually means some trauma early on because the things that are terrorizing in childhood become sources of attraction later. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And Mike? Mm-hmm. We lost him. No, I'm, I'm you there. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. All right, well, so... As far as I know, I, I didn't have any sexual abuse or anything. Nothing yeah. that I can remember. Or... Did you, were you exposed to pornography at a young age? Um... No, I mean the random, you know, check the videotape in the mom's VCR and, you know, find something like that. But uh, how, old were you, how old were you when that happened? Uh, it's probably like 13, 14. No, no, no. Some people, too, I'm going to hang up because I'm getting my feedback. Some people have a crazy curiosity when it comes to all things that seem, uh, that make, that, Weird. that make no yeah. sense yeah. to sane people. No, and, it, and, and, it, and like, for me, it's those sort of, Hey man, there's a videotape of a guy being uh, eaten by an ostrich. Yeah, it's awesome. He well, he's like, well, it's not really a guy. He's like a 13 year old kid, but he gets he's killed, man. He well, gets hit by a train. Th- that, he gets sucked in the inlet of a jet. You know, it's that. like there's that. There's that sort you, of morbid like, curiosity. Nah, I really yeah. don't want to see that. But then, then the, the, what it becomes sexual to people. Mm-hmm. What I my experience has been when people have weird sexual sort of preoccupations. There's usually a little smattering of addiction there, mm. like like they're like they need high levels of arousal to feel sexual, and I mm-hmm. I don't know if that's because their reward system has been dialed in by drugs. Well, let's mm. ask him if he's all going. right. But then what about those guys? Like you know, people do that. This with this, you know, oh come here, the computer. Yeah, what's up? Yeah, yeah. This chick, man, when she has an orgasm, crap comes out of her. It's like <laughs> I got enough trouble beating off just from <laughs> fear factor. Yeah. I don't need to add this to my. I don't. Yeah. I don't need another thing in my hopper. Yeah. I don't need to see anyone get run over by commuter trains. I don't see a guy get his leg amputated with a chainsaw. Don't no, I don't need. I don't it. need some chick who defecates when she. You know what I mean? But let, let's ask Mike because I, I, I. That's a a the arousal thing is. A, an addict thing, and then to sort of need more is something that happens when you've been addicted. Mike, yes, you got the addict thing. Um, well, I mean, yeah, I, mean, I masturbate pretty much. I no, no, no. I don't no, mean the, masturbation. I mean you've been addicted to a drug. Uh, I'm not addicted. No, I, I, you know, I messed around a little bit, but nothing that you know. Is, it, right. is it in your family? Is there alcoholism or anything in your family? Uh, alcoholism, yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. so see, I, I usually mm-hmm. see this go along with the alcoholism thing. All right, and so you know. All right, so here's the thing, Mike. I don't, uh, I don't if, think you're if, gay, if, and I don't think you're anything. But you're on the cusp of sort of stepping into a weird world right. that you might get sucked into. If, if he'd been sexually abused or something, we'd be saying, well, you know, this is that. But this may just be the arousal thing that addicts get into sometimes. Yeah, they just get into this extreme, well, extreme everything, extreme sports, extreme sex. They just, they just need that high level of arousal. Right. Whereas I'd like to be left alone. Indeed you do. Even sexually. Hmm. Nikita? Yeah, hello. Twenty one? Uh yes. What's up? Um, I actually I have a question since you were talking about orgasms. Um, I when I use my vibrator I can have 
um, I don't know whether it's all one orgasm or whether it's a bunch over and over again because I get, you know, where you get to the peak and then I have like a two or three second period in between where I, you know, it's like you come down and then I can have another orgasm um, and I can do that like 40 times in a row. And I'm wondering right. if it's all 40. one. No, no, that is, that is a, that is, you are someone who is, that is what multiple orgasm is. It's, mm -hmm. it's rep repetitive recurrent orgasms without refractoriness. Do you, uh, this is with a guy? No, no, no way. <laughs> oh, how dare you? How dare you? Of course, Kato, the guy. Sorry for insulting you. What if the guy brought? What if the guy used the uh, vibrator? Uh, no, because it's a certain it's a certain spot, and then it's different yeah. every single interval. is It's a slightly different spot, and it's yeah. like I'm the only one who could know where it is. Uh, listen, I've said this. Uh, I've said this many times. There is you. You guys are a make of car for which there's no manual. I, you know what I mean? Like where, like, like a car that changes morphs every day. <laughs> like, that's what it is. Oh, is that my car or is that my car? Wait well, a minute, wait a but, but here's yesterday was, here's uh, the thing. Here's what guys are. Guys, guys are we ninety eight percent just a Taurus wagon. Tricycle. You know, it's too, too, no, too advanced. No, no, I know. But there, here's what I'm saying. There's, there's, there's a manual. It's not very complicated. Right. We're all the same. There's 5% okay. or some weird Fiat or something. You can't figure. Those are the gays, really. <laughs> they like the convertibles. You can't figure them out. You don't want to. But we're all very easy. You guys are as if car companies just put out one car and then closed, broke all the molds. <laughs> Close the line and then design another one and crap that one out every day. There's no parts. There's no manual. We don't know what. Everything's different. And it's like uh, on this. Oh no no engines in the rear. Okay. Oh the last one I had I had popped the hood. No huh? no it's what the rear. Doing? Oh but it's front wheel drive. No 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 rear wheel drive. No but I had a front wheel. The stick shifts in a different place. The cigarette lighters different. The wiper knobs are different. Everything's different well, like on said, all of you. I, I have a show tonight on Discovery Health Channel about orgasm, and the majority of the show is about the differences amongst the female orgasms. Yeah. And not particularly on this I'm, show. But let me say this, Drew. I'm walking. You're done. You know, I'm, I'm walking. You're done. Well, here's here, a, a different I'm show. Done. I actually brought in a geneticist, and what he says is the X chromosome, first of all, is huge. It's a lot of material on it. I don't women, care. I'm on foot. Hey, second. Women have two X chromosomes. And the men I don't care have one hundred. I got my what, thumb out, baby. What makes us a man is the Y chromosome, and it's a tiny piece of genetic material. It's actually decaying, so it's making us. Be believe male. me, believe me. I know <laughs> In, these guys I hang out with can't right. change your own car tire. Right. The Y chromosome is becoming. We're coming, what makes us male is less and less diverse. What makes people female is a tremendously diverse genetic uh, because material. of the XX. Yes, and the X is a huge chromosome with lots of different material on it. The Y is essentially the same for all men, and that's what makes the men. Mm -hmm. So men come out the same, basically. Right, because we have a component. Yeah, well, it's just that, that's, that the, the, the man component is a very simple component. Yeah. It's, while the female one is very diverse, woman to woman. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like if we were a dessert, we would just be ice cream, and there's cream, and there's sugar, and you blend it up. And there's a little different flavors and stuff, but it's all yeah, ice cream. It's women, ice cream. it's just desserts. You don't know if it's pastries or fingers or pie or, or cake or it's all something. Cupcake, sugar from the cactus. It's all yeah, Mexicans are awesome. <laughs> uh, all something, all it's different. Everything's yeah. different. Yeah, don't even or know what you're getting. Tiramisu, Adam. <laughs> Napoleon. Tiramisu, yeah, that's you, baby. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's uh, let's take ourselves. Uh, the engineer's Michelle. She's a nice like flan. <laughs> 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 All right, let's take ourselves a break. Let's do it. We'll uh, be back after this. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. That's Dr. Drew. I sometimes go by Ace. And we've got a blast from the past on the line here. We have Gustavo Eubangas. Gold. Old Gustavo. Well, but this is... Uncle Gustavo. This is Gustavo Eubangas the third. I don't believe this. <laughs> this Maybe. Yeah. Let's some see. people call him uh, <laughs> Trip <good>. Eubangas. Because, <laughs> you know, it's Trip. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Go ahead, Trip. Hello, Gustavo. Yes. How are you What's happened? Doing? We're good. Yeah. What's um, going on? I can say about three years ago, I met this chick. Been dating ever since. About a month and a half ago, we broke up. But when we started dating, we started having sex, unprotected sex, and uh, contracted an STD from her. Okay. And mm -hmm. I got HPV. 
Uh -huh. And my question was, how easily susceptible is it when being involved with somebody else? I've been hesitant to get involved with somebody else, hesitant on how to bring it across mm -hmm. to somebody else. Did, did you, uh, did you, do you ever have a breakout? Did you get warts? Yeah, I ended up getting a breakout, and I had them frozen off. Mm -hmm. Went to the doctor, they fixed it, and... Well, it's hard to predict. Since, since some then, some viruses, some wart virus sticks around for about three to five years, and then goes away on its own. Others persist through time. All of them, when you have them, are highly contagious. If you have asexual encounter, you will pass it, unless you wear a condom. That would reduce the risk rather substantially. As well as orally, as well as vaginal. No, no, you don't have it in your mouth, do you? No, what about no, receiving I oral? No, I, I yeah, receiving oral. Yeah, there's talk about that. I've never seen that. How long ago did you get it? This was three years ago, and uh, pretty much, I say, within the first year that we found out we had it. Mm. That's when when was your last breakout. outbreak? That time. So it's been but, two years since I've had so, an outbreak. So, Drew, is there anything, not definitive, not 100%, but if he hasn't had an outbreak in a couple of years? Yes. It, first off, is there any examination that would be worth even making a trip to the doctor's office yeah, for? Yeah, th there's the thing I gave you where you pour a quarter percent of acetic acid on the penis. Quarter. And, it felt like 75%. And, and then you look at it under a, a, what's called a woods light, which is sort of a uh, neon light, black right. light. And you can see the kind of pre-wart kinds of lesions. And at least if you had that, you know you're definitely contagious. If you mm -hmm. don't have that, it you know, mitigates against that a little bit. Would you... I, by the way, didn't have it, thank you, and won $100 from Dr. Drew. Would you, Pain, that's the kind of confidence painful. I have in my penis, we did on the radio. Stunt penis. Would you uh, recommend that a guy like Gustavo, who's been dry for a couple of years, go in and see yeah. if he can find something? Yeah, it, it would not, you could see a dermatologist and would not be a bad thing to do. How about it? some vinegar and a black light? And, and, yeah, yeah. Probably could, yeah, right? Yeah, probably could, but he wouldn't know what he's looking for, though. Yeah, thing. he'd and, see a dingleberry right. and burn it off with a soldering iron. Right. Yeah. And... The other thing is you got to be wearing condoms. You, you, the, and realize, Gustavo, that 50% of the women you come in contact with will already have this. No. <laughs> yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. It's very common. Uh, very common. Yeah. There's, by the way, there's going to be a war virus. There's going to be a vaccine for this very shortly. No. Oh, what do I yeah. care? I'm clean, baby. Yeah. I hope they never come up with one. So that All you people can I'm put you guys on islands. What's that? Suffer together. <laughs> that thing you're talking about, what's it called? What I should... Just, uh, just see a dermatologist. Just go see a dermatologist. They'll know what to okay. do. Yeah. T tell them to pop out the uh, woods light. Woods light, yeah. yeah. Woods if you could, you could get a little wood for the woods light, that'd be nice. No, too. No, 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 no. No? Stretch your no, skin no. out a little? That'd be weird. Okay. Yeah. Did they ever examine erect penises for anything? Yeah. There's got to be something where they punch them up with something and have to take a look at them. Some well, weird, probably for when they're some you know, shot or something. They no, can... no, more like when they're like repairing if, after a fracture and stuff. Oh, make oh, sure right. it works. Oh, yeah. Wow. A little test drive. Awesome. Bill? Uh, <clears throat> speaking of erect penises. Yeah, Bill. What's up? Adam. Corolla. Uh, yeah. Hey, I'm, Very I'm able to, um, oh, this is embarrassing, uh, go down on myself. Oh, yeah. It's too bad. I know it's humiliating, but it's important that you be truthful when you're talking <laughs> on the radio and you're calling in. Waiting on hold for half an hour to uh, announce to the world you blow oh, yourself. I, I guess my question is: Does it make me gay? No, oh yeah, definitely. definitely. This uh, this this uh, one has vexed man for man for uh, many years. Jimmy and I used to get in this argument uh, with Kevin and Bean over here on K Rock, which is uh, you know I always claimed, and, and Jimmy's Jimmy says it doesn't. <laughs> Make you gay, you know. If you could detach your penis, would you give yourself oral sex, and would that make you gay? And those guys say no, but uh, I mean, they say no, it makes you gay. They wouldn't do it. I wouldn't finish myself off, but I would yeah. definitely get myself started. Ugh. But on the other hand, you never know when I'm going to pop, you know. So I'd have to be very yeah. careful. Oh my god, very careful. Some more they can deal with. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Discovery Health Channel midnight. Does that make over? you gay, Drew? What do you think? No. That does not make you gay. What if? I mean, what? Just, but it makes you, makes you weird, right? Makes you something. Yeah, it makes you weird. Here's the whole thing about giving oral to yourself. You don't, you know, you you got to bend over in a weird way, yeah. Bill. Yeah. Can you really get at your junk? Well, I have to sit on a mason jar and then. There we go. Okay. Hey, uh, uh, hey, guys. Yeah. Drew, I hey, my wife and I are on your show in August. I just. 
Huge fan, 10 years. Had to finally get through your screeners. Kudos to them. Um, we're on your TV show. We uh, had in the guys August. Come on here and tape us and just wanted to say thanks and good time. Great. What'd you do on the show? Um, it's, uh, it's about the masturbation episode. And very good. He blew him, so. Ah. No, Hi, Phil. No. Thanks, Bill. Mazel tov. <laughs> in August, we did that. Wow, we've been working on this that long. I mean, it airs in August. Oh, it airs in August. Okay, got it, got it. Got it. Okay, I think I know who Bill is. Yeah, we're not in August. Fantastic. Yeah. Bill, thank you very much. You're very, very helpful, actually. I'm, I'm thinking he's saying it airs in yeah, August. Yeah, yeah, that makes more sense. Uh, Drew, why do I know more Because you know everything. Show? Yeah. Shelby? No, I know yeah. nothing about your show. I just know I know everyone's inflection, and I know what they mean. That's what I mean. Okay. Go ahead, Shelby. 22. Hi, I, long time listener, first time caller. Thanks. It's a pleasure to talk to you, too. Well, it's a delight to talk to you, Shelby, and an honor. Thank you. Even though you're back on Portland a lot, uh, I, I accept it in the way it was given. Uh, mm. Drew, I had a question for you. Uh, Hold on. We don't bag on Portland, I don't think. Bag on Portland? We like Portland. What have I said bad about Portland? I don't know. But maybe weird. maybe back in Oregon or something. What do I say about Portland? Oh, uh, just you bag on a lot of a lot of the tweakers and the math and but I have to agree with you. <laughs> Are you sure you you maybe you're talking about Lycus or something? Um, I don't even. You, you may be right. I I never say anything about Portland, other than I'd probably like to move there. One yeah, day. Portland, Seattle, we like. Anyway, what's the deal? Um, question about pregnancy tests. The differences yeah. between a urinary and a blood test. The reliability. Uh, mm-hmm. My girlfriend went in for a, a blood pregnancy test the day before she had gastric bypass surgery, and it came up positive or it came up negative. And a few weeks later, three weeks after the surgery, she was six and a half weeks along. Wow. Ooh. Um, and we're not getting answers as far as, I'm sorry I had to fib to the, scroll, uh, the call taker a bit, but I've, this question has been shot down like four times that I've called in. Wow. Uh, so, so the, the deal is that... The reliability right. of the pregnancy test. The, I mean, the blood pregnancy test. Yes. Well, it depends on what your placenta is producing, and what's you know. The, these are very accurate tests. Well, by, the, by the way, it says on the screen false negative through blood tests. Yeah. It doesn't. That right, doesn't. I'm more of questioning about what what the effects of the surgery itself may have also had on the baby. Yeah, they're not a, giving us any answers either. Well, they won't. How, what can they say? They may well, have may have had effect. They won't know until we get through this. How and maybe uh, nothing, but it's yeah. it's a concern, obviously. How how has your girlfriend been losing a lot of weight? Um, she's been, I think she's lost about 25, 30 pounds since the surgery, but right, okay. now she's so nauseous and not eating. So she's gone into starvation mode. So she's not losing any weight because of the morning sickness. She's not eating anything to, to give that sense of being full. So she's, her body's stopped well, dropping pounds. I'm, I'm no nutritionist or a mathematician, but if you stop eating, eventually you're going to lose weight. Yes, I, absolutely. I am. Like I said, I don't work at a gym. I, I think what he's saying is it's kind of starvation mode. The body gets con- tries to conserve a little bit. A little bit. It does. But it, it, listen, there's no such thing as a test that's 100%. There really is not. Mm. And so any test can have error in it, whether it's human error or actually a- error in the assay. And pregnancy tests, yeah, they, they can be false negatives and false positives. It happens. Right. Rare, but it happens. Take a break. We'll be right back. Yeah. Well, there you go. Dagaroni in tomorrow night. And please don't forget Discovery Health Channel right now. Dag, one of the greatest living black Midnight. comedians um, Ever. currently working the, the scene, you know. So he'll be in uh, tomorrow night. There you go. There he is. And until next time, this is Adam Crow for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. Here's the deal. Don't get the guy pregnant and then, I mean, don't get you pregnant. Don't let the guy. This has been Love Line. Love Line. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, the sponsors, or the station. The producer for Loveline is Annie Gold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.